Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <tries> من يادي لا فلا مدل له ومن يدله فلا هادي له واشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وعده لا شريك له واشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم إنزا إلا يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقول الله Ako tukoti wala tamutu na ila wa antu muslimu. Rabi shuali sadri wa yesili alhamuri wa alu kutada milizani ya fukau kawli. All praises and thanks to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sherisha and the sustainer of the world. May the peace and blessing of Allah be upon the seal of messengership. Muhammad ibn Abdullah is household his companions and all those who follow in their footsteps until the day of judgment. It's Friday, uh, the 28th of August, 2021, correspond to the 11th or 12th of Maram, 1442 AH. I hope you are all well. I hope you are all in good form. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to guide us aright. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to make our feet firm on the pla- on the path of felicity al-Islam. So you are welcome to our multimedia platform, Truth Prevails TV. So it's time for us to bring you yet another episode of our Friday Reminder. Uh, in tonight's program, uh, what we want to look at uh is the seven destructive sins the seven destructive sins rasulullah was reported was reported to have said in a soi adit uh, narrated by abu raira and habu raira and nobi you and nobi you and nobi you and nobi you Ijtenibu Sawa al Mubi Koti Kolu Ya Rasulullah Kolu Ya Rasulullah Wamo Una Kola Kola Shirukubilla Wasiru Wakotla nafsi leti haramu Allahu illa bilhaqqo. Waklu riba. Waklu mali yatima. Watawalli. Watawalli yawma sahf. Watawalli yawma sahf. Wakosfu. Wakosfu. Almusanati. Al-Muminati, Al-Gafilati. Let me take the this one more time. Uh, and Abu Roy Rock, what do you love, Hanu? And Nabi, you, and Nabi, you, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Kola, Ijtenibu, Ijtenibu, Saba, Al-Mubiqati, Kolu, 
Ya Rasulallahi. Kalu ya Rasulallahi, wa ma una. Kala, kala. Shuriku bilai, shuriku bilai. Wasiru, wasiru. Wakotla fi nafs, wakotla nafsi. Leti aromo Allahu illa bila hako. Wa aklu riba. Wa aklu mali yatima. Wa aklu mali yatima. Wa tawalli. Wa tawalli. Ya umu saf. Wa tawalli ya umu saf. Wa kofu. Wa kofu. Wa kofu. Al musonati. Al muminati. Al gafilati. The narration of the Adiz go thus. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was reported to have said that in this Adiz narrated by Abu Roira, the greatest narrator of the, of the Adiz, Abu Roira, may Allah be pleased with him, is the greatest narrator of the Adiz. He narrated more Adiz than anybody else. Abu Roira. So he narrated this Adiz, an authentic Adiz in Sahih Bukhari. Is an authentically narrated adit. So as well as Salah was supposed to have said that avoid seven destructive sins. Seven great destructive sins. Al Mubi Koti. This these are great destructive sins. Al Mubi Koti. This is what is called in Arabic. Is tenibu sabra al mubi koti. Avoid seven great destructive sins. The, the, the people that were around Rasulullah, so like they, 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 they inquired, they asked Rasulullah. Kalu ya Rasulullah, wa ma una, what are they? They asked Rasulullah, so like the people around him, they asked him, when he, when he told them, avoid seven destructive sins, they asked him, what are they? What are these seven destructive sins? Rasulullah so like started listing them. The number one on the list, he said, call her. Ashiruku billah. That's the number one of the seven destructive sins. Ashiruku billah. To associate partner with Allah is the most is the most hated sin in the sight of Allah. Allah detests association of partner with him. Allah detests it. Allah will never forgive somebody that dies in the state of association of partner with him. Allah will never forgive that person. Allah says in the Quran, I will be live nation. In no la la yagiru an yushika bi wa yagiru ma duna dhalika li man yasha. Wa man yushika bi la yafqad dala dala la ba'id. Allah says, in no la, verily, surely, certainly. In no la la yagiru an yushika bi. Allah will never forgive. Allah will never forgive. Association of partner with him. Why you more do not die like He forgives, but he may forgive any other sins apart from that. But when should you be lie? Association of partner with Allah. I want you to buy if I call it vows up. But I want you to be lie if I call it dollar the lab by either. And whoever I want you to be lie if I call it dollar the lab by either, whoever associate partner with Allah has gone far, far astray. So the second on the list, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Wasiru, Wasiru, is to practice sorcery, is to practice magic. That's the second great destructive sin. Whoever commits this sin has committed a great sin. It's a great sin. It's a, it destroys your deen. It destroys your belief. Practice of sorcery, practice of mag magic, it destroys your sin. As soon as I was part of, I said that whoever goes to a fortune teller, for example, if you go to a fortune teller, if you consult a fortune teller to uh, to help you see what will happen to you, how your future will be, this is an act of magic. They consult is an act of magic. 
to look at what is going to happen in the future. These people that do these people that do this, they consult the genes, the Shia team. They help them to 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 uh, to source for this information. But we have been warned not to uh, not to commit this sin, not to do this. That whoever does this, his salat will be nullified for forty days, and he has to pray. He, he must not miss his salat. Salat is compulsory. You must never miss your salat. But on top of that, you're, on top of you praying your salat, if you consult a fortune teller, your salat will be nullified, will not be accepted, and but you still have to pray. This is the uh, the severity of the punishment of of practicing sorcery magic of going to fortune teller. You know, so that's the second great destructive sin. Rasulullah so continues in this hadith. Wakotla nafs wakotla nafsi leti aromo lahu illa bil ha illa bil hakko to kill to kill a life which Allah has forbidden except for a just cause. That is the third great destructive sin. That is the third on the list. To kill a life which Allah has forbidden except for a just cause. We know that is, it is in the Quran that uh, whoever kills an innocent soul, whoever shed an innocent blood, it's, like, it's as if has killed the entire humanity. It is as if you have killed the entire humanity. So it is totally forbidding to shed the blood of an innocent person. We don't kill for free. Contrary to the uh, misconception in some media that, uh, you know, the Muslims, some Muslim, you know, you're allowed to blow yourself up, you're allowed to, to kill indiscriminately. You're not allowed to kill ind indiscriminately in Islam. You don't shed innocent blood. You don't kill for fun. You don't kill for free. You don't, it's, it is one of the greatest, the third on the list of the great destructive sin that will destroy your faith, that will destroy your being. So we, we are forbidden. It's totally forbidden in our being, in our in our religion, to, to shed innocent blood, to kill somebody unjustly. We are, you know, you are only allowed if we are, we, we uh, uh, in our faith, in our deen, we, uh, we, 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 we don't launch an offensive attack. We don't, lo we don't, we don't carry out a pre preemptive attack. We don't carry out a pre preemptive attack. You are allowed to defend ourselves. And it is an, in, an, in, an alienable right. It is an inalienable right to defend yourself. If somebody attacks you, you, are, you have the, a God-given right to defend yourself. You have the God-given right. It's a God-given right to defend yourself. This is what we are allowed to do as Muslims. You are only allowed to defend yourself. You are now you are not allowed to to launch a preemptive attack. Somebody is not attacking you. You just launch attack on somebody. You are not allowed to do that. So we don't we don't kill. Contrary to misconception, you know, in some media there. You know, so that is the third great destructive thing. The number four on the list. Also, as I said, I'm continuing that is the number four. He said, Waklu Riba to eat up Uzri. Uzri is, a, is an interest based transaction. Uzri, Riba, it is called Riba in Arabic, the Arabic term for it, for any interest based financial transaction is Riba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, is in Surah Bakura that Ya Yual Ledina Hamanu Takulaha Wazaru Mobi Mobakiya Mino Riba in Kuntu Mumini In Kuntu Mumini Ya Yual Ledina Hamanu Takulaha Wazaru Mobakiya Mino Riba in Kuntu Mumini So Allah says that all oh, you will believe, fear Allah, and give up what remains of riba, and give up what remain, what remains of riba. If you are true believers, so we are we are not allowed to to participate to involve in interest based transaction. 
if you mistakenly, if you unknowingly, or out of love for 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 doing it for money, you 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 involved in riba based transaction, allow one's us, allow one's true believer that you have to give it up. You have to give it up before you leave this world. It is number four on the list, interest based transaction. Sadly, a lot of Muslims. A lot of people that claim to be good Muslims, to be conscious Muslims, to be devout Muslims, they play with this. They take it lightly. They, they, uh, they apply nonchalant attitude towards this. Sadly, sadly. They apply nonchalant attitude towards riba, towards interest based transaction. It is number four. It's the number four, the fourth great destructive sin, according to Rasulullah. It's a big sin. There is another, there's a narration that says that would you like to sleep with your mother, somebody that commits riba, the one that is, is, is dealing in interest. It's a great sin. And I said the people that are involved in this, they will be, they will not be able to stand up on the day of judgment. They will stand up as somebody that is that is mad, that is intoxicated, that doesn't know what he's doing, somebody that is that is touched by, you know, that is maybe suffering from that is that is. You know, it's much known that this is crazy, that is it's all over the place. That's how Allah will raise people that involve in usury on the day of judgment. If we truly fear Allah, we have to we have to sacrifice. This life is about sacrifice. In this part of the world, quickly I'm gonna digress a bit just to just to buttress my point on Luba that we have to make you know, we have to make sacrifice for us to be true believers. In this part of the world, it is compulsory for motorists to ensure uh, their car. You know, insurance is compulsory. Motor insurance is compulsory for people that own cars in this part of the world. And Muslims are caught up in this. And there is a way to avoid riba even with this. You can pay your insurance premium. You can pay it in one go. You can pay the whole lot to avoid interest. Because what happens is the insurance company if they borrow the premium on your behalf, there will be interest charged. There will be interest charged to your premium. So you know you will not pay the exact amount of interest. You will not pay the exact amount of your premium, you know, charged, you know, by your insurer, by by an insurance company. So they will add extra money on top of it because your premium that you, that you are meant to pay in a year was borrowed on your behalf. So to avoid that, you have to, you should pay your premium, your insurance policy, your your your, your premium, the, the amount of money charged for your for your policy. You should pay it in one go. You you should pay the entire amount in one go. It's a sacrifice. I'm not trying to brag here. My premium this year, to avoid that, I pay the whole lot. My insurance policy is for a business purpose for my car. I pay the whole lot. It's about sacrifice to avoid the interest base, to avoid the interest that the insurer will borrow on my behalf. If I chose, had I chosen not to pay it in one go, they will borrow the money on my behalf from a from a, from a financier, from, from 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 a lender that will charge an interest. To avoid that, I pay the whole amount in one go. I'm not saying this to brag, but to encourage one another that we should make sacrifice. This dunya is all about sacrifice because interest usually is number four great destructive sin. It destroys your deen. We should not play with our deen. We should not play with Allah. Look at it. Look at that. Look around us in this world today. So let me complete the list <laughs> so that not to digress, digress a lot. The number fifth on the list. The number fifth on the list is Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam say waklu. Molly Yetima, Waklu, Molly Yetima, to eat up the wealth of an oven. To eat the wealth of an oven is the fifth great destructive sin. It's a big sin, one of the biggest sins in the sight of Allah. To eat up the wealth of an oven. Allah says in, 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 in Kusu and Niza to buttress this point, Quran chapter 4, verse 10, that Whoever devour, unjustly devour the wealth of an oven, he has devoured nothing but fire into, into their bellies. 
they have devolved fire into their bellies. People that devour, unjustly devour the wealth of an oven. You have devour, you have devour nothing but fire into the belly, into the belly. This is the severity of eating up the wealth of an oven. We have to desist from this. We have to refrain from doing this completely. We should avoid it. To eat up the weight of an oven. We should not take advantage of them. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from this. That's number fifth on the list. The number sixth great destructive sin is Watawali Yahuma Safi. Watawali Yahuma Safi. To run away from the battlefield at the time of fight, at the time of fighting, to flee, to flee the battlefield. At the time of uh, at the time of fighting, Muslims we are not we are not. It's a great sin to run away from the battlefield, and we know that we are only allowed to fight a, 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 a just war. We don't launch preemptive attack as Muslim. We are only allowed defensive war. We are only allowed to defend ourselves and our families. We are only allowed to do that. We don't launch preemptive attack. So if somebody launches attack against us there's an aggression against us against our community then we are allowed to defend ourselves and when we are defending ourselves we don't run away it's the sixth great destructive sin in the sight of allah to run away from the battle to flee the battlefield at the time of fighting so number seven the last but not the least on the list of the great destructive sin Wakofu, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Wakofu, Wakofu, uh, Al Musonati, Al Muminati, Al Gafilati. To accuse a chaste woman, to accuse a chaste woman, uh, a woman, a believer of indecency, to wrong, to accuse them, to wrongfully accuse a chaste woman, a believer of you know illicit illicit intercourse for example uh illicit relationship for example to accuse them wrongfully is the number seven great destructive sin as we all know that you know false witness is a big sin nowadays so we should avoid all these great seven sins is so important this list we have to we should memorize it brothers and sisters we should seek this sin this seven great destructive sin we should stick it to our head for the sake of allah we should remember all the time that we have to do everything possible humanly possible to avoid all these seven great destructive sins as enumerated in this hadith by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's our guide, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is our best example. Uh, it's our role model. He warned us, he heard us, he urged us in this hadith to avoid these seven great destructive sins. So I will list them out in order again, just for us to recap, really. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam us in, that, in this hadith. Ijtenibu Saba Alumubi Kot Alumubi Kot. Then the, the people around him hacks him. Call Luya Rasulullah. Wama Una. What are they? What are these seven destructive sins? Call Rasulullah said. Shiri could be lie. Association of partner with Allah. Number one. Number two. Was seal to practice magic. To practice sorcery, to practice, to practice fortune telling. That's number two on the list. Number three, Wakotla Nafsi. Wakotla Nafsi Leti Aroma Lahu Illa Bilhako. To kill, to kill a life which Allah has forbidden except for a just cause. Number four on the on the list. Wakru riba to eat up Uzuri to eat up interest, to take 
or involve or partake in interest-based financial transactions. That's number four on the list. Number fifth on the list. Zulaslam continue. Uh, number fifth on the list. Waaklu Molly Yetima to eat up the wealth of an oven to take advantage of another one unjustly. To, to, to unjustly devour the wealth of the oven. You only you have done only nothing, but you, you devour the hellfire into our belly. Why also be lied. So let's refrain from this. To devour unjustly devour the wealth of an oven. So that's number fifth on, on the list. Number six on the list. What awali yaumusaf to flee away from the battlefield at the time of fighting. We know that as Muslims, we are only allowed to fight defensive war. And the last, number seven, the last but not the least, on the list of the seven great destructive list, great destructive sin, as told us in this hadith by Rasulullah is Wakofu, Wakofu al Musanati al Muminati al Gafilati. To accuse a chaste woman, a very religious woman, a very decent, religious, pious, righteous woman, uh, to, to, to accuse them of indecency, of illicit relationship, to wrongfully accuse them. This is the seven on the list. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save you and I from committing all these seven sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala illuminate our hearts. Let us not become heedless. Let us not make us fake, bogus Muslims. Not make us believers that pay lip service to this religion. That just talk without putting it into action what we know. Let us not make us munafikun because these are signs of munafikun. You say something else and you do something else. Let us strengthen our iman. Let us refresh our iman. May last one that be with every one of us. Allahumma. You sorry for the kulu. Sorry for the kulu bu ala dinik. Allahumma. You sorry for the kulu. Sorry for the kulu bu kum ala dinik. Allahumma. You sorry for the kulu. Sorry for the kulu bu ala dinik. May last one that Allah turn our heart. Every one of us. Uh, may Allah turn our heart. Is the turn of the heart. Allah is the turn of the heart. May He turn our heart to be on His on His deen. To do the good thing in this life. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. Wa fi li akhiyatu asana wa kinna dabanna. Rabbana ablana mina asi wa jina wa duriya atina. Kuratan ayun wa jalina li mutakina imama. Rabbana isufana azaba jalina. Inna azaba akana garama. Rabbi jali mukima salawa min duriyati. Rabbana wa taqobali dua. Rabbana. Rabbana dolamana afusana wa ilam tagafulana wa taramilaka mila khasirin. ربنا انزل علينا ما حيت من السماء تكون لنا عند الاولين واخذنا ويت منك وارزقنا وانت خير الراسكين ولا حول ولا قوه الا بالله العلي العظيم امين so alhamdulillah this is why we are going to bring tonight's episode of our friday reminder to a close باذن الله تعالى so باذن الله ان شاء الله we, we will come your way again next Friday, but it might be different time. We are altering our our schedule uh, these days uh, because of the Maghrib time in this part of the world. The time keeps changing in this part of the world. The night is getting uh, shorter again now. It's getting longer. Uh, the day is getting shorter and the night is getting longer in this part of the world. So that will affect the time we pray our Maghrib. So, and they will prefer to do our program so that, you know, you people, especially in, in Nigeria can, you know, after they pray their Isha, they can watch our program. So, uh, we will uh, most likely alter our time again for next week. So, we we'll uh, we'll inform you, as we always do, uh, the time, the correct time for the program next week. So, inshallah, we don't seem to have any comments so far tonight. So without any comment, uh, we are bringing the program to a close. Bidni Lai Ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this little reminder beneficial for every one of you. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any mistake that I have made, that I might make during the course of this brief reminder, 
Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive my mistakes, forgive my much shortcomings. May Allah forgive every one of us. Uh, the mistake is from me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive, forgive me and forgive every one of us. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, preserve us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let in our lives uh, to uh, witness more Juma in, in our lifetime, in increased wealth, in increased piety, in increased righteousness, in increased tranquility, happiness, and prosperity. Amen. So, business light, Tala, until I come your way again next week, uh, I say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Peace. Ah.